Hey everyone, welcome to my review of the AirPods Pro. Let's get started. Now, before we get into it, I wanted to mention that no, this is not sponsored. Apple never does sponsorships, really, uh, and they did not send these to me, believe it or not. Um, so, yeah, even though it'll probably sound like it's sponsored, I can assure you I paid for these with my own money, and I've been using them for about a month. Uh, so, I've gotten past the sort of honeymoon phase, if you want to call it that, of kind of... Uh, just the joy of getting a new product and stuff like that. However, I actually like these more now than I did when I got them, and that's because there are a lot of features that are much better than I thought they would be, or much more useful than I thought they would be, and a lot of features that are in here, which I didn't even know existed on AirPods. So let's get started with the flagship feature of these new headphones, which is noise cancellation. Um, it's pretty good. It's not the best. It's not like QC35 quality, but it is better than, say, the Beat Studio 3. I've tried those, and they're really good at noise cancelling in my opinion. I mean, I haven't tried a ton of headphones, but I thought those were pretty good. However, these are actually better at um, a kind of some of the sounds that got through those um, like quicker, um, more abrupt sounds. These seem to uh, cancel those out better, and it's really interesting to just have this tiny thing in your ear instead of obviously the over-ear design of like Beats or something like that. So yeah, it's about how I thought it would be. It's pretty good. Um, uh, like I said, not the best, but it is a lot more useful than I thought it would be. I thought, you know, you'll use it on a plane, in a crowd, something like that where there's a ton of noise, but um, I found just turning it on and walking around the house or sitting in bed or whatever is much more pleasant with noise cancellation, and I think you'll find that to be true as well. For example, if you're sitting in bed, it's it's a weird, really cool experience to not hear the sheets moving or to not see, or you can see cars going by but not be able to hear them or not be able to hear the air conditioner turn on and stuff like that. It's just a really cool experience to have these on even if you're not in a super loud, annoying environment. So yeah, that is one feature that has impressed me. And then another thing that kind of goes along with or goes hand in hand with the um, noise cancelling is transparency mode. Now. Um, transparency mode is an interesting one because certain sounds really go through uh, very clearly and actually sound better than real life, um, like some of the more hissy or um, higher sounds like that, um, but the low end is not as great as I would I would have hoped. Um, so yeah, you can hear your surroundings really good, a lot of them even better than real life, but when it comes to the lower stuff, you might want to still take the headphones out to hear it better. Um, so yeah, I think there's still some room for improvement on transparency mode. Uh, another thing I did notice on transparency mode was if you're in a windy environment, the um, the microphones that are being used to play like an amplified sound in your ears to negate the passive noise cancellation, they do uh, pick up some of the wind noise. So you get that sound of like a camera out on a really windy day uh, with no windproofing or anything about it. Um, but it's only at certain angles and if it's like above a certain level of wind and stuff like that. So even though um, the microphones have been upgraded from the uh, first and second generation AirPods, especially for windy environments, uh, there's still, again, room for improvement on that. Um, so yeah, transparency mode is really great, but it needs a little bit of work. Um, again, still really impressive, actually, that the latency is this low and that it works this well with the headphones, so I'm really glad they included it. But yeah, we are going to have to wait a couple years until it's like... Um, until it's as good as normal hearing. And just to be clear, you don't get the windy, weird sound if you have transparency mode off or with the uh, active noise cancellation on. You won't hear any wind sound, I, I can assure you. Now, it's a common, uh, I don't know, myth or something that these actually have worse battery life than the previous uh, AirPods 1 and 2 because on Apple's website it says 4.5 hours of battery life, but that is 
is with noise cancellation or transparency mode turned on. So if those are turned off, you actually do get the exact same five hours of battery life um, as the original and second generation AirPods. So um, it, as an apples to apples comparison, it's the exact same battery life, if not better, um, from my experience. And uh, it, you only get that less battery life if you have one of those settings turned on because, of course, there's a lot more audio processing. It has to use the microphones a lot more to um, to get those features to work. So, apples to apples, these are exactly the same, so keep that in mind. But battery life has actually been pretty good. They're like in this new class of uh, technology products that... It, it really doesn't matter about the battery life past a certain point because whenever you have these out of your ear, it's always best to put them back in the case, of course, so you don't lose them or any of that, and they do charge in the case, but if you have these out of your ear for basically any period in the 4.5 hours of battery life that they do have, they'll charge back up to full battery very quickly. Um, it, that's another thing that's really impressed me on these because Apple claims they have uh, three hours of listening time in 15 minutes of charging, which seems to be spot on actually from my testing, but it feels way faster um, in reality than it, it says on the spec sheet. I thought, you know, that sounds pretty fast, but no, it's like really fast in reality, at least from from uh, my point of view. But yeah, if if you just take them out to have like a short conversation or something like that, and be sure to put them back in the case, of course, then yeah, they, it practically has infinite battery life. I mean, it might as well be. And then the case itself has 24 hours of battery life. But if you put that where it's supposed to go and you have a wireless charger either on your nightstand or it doesn't even have to be if in your bedroom if you're like weird about that or something. You could have it wherever you want and as long as you put the case sometime within a couple days, I mean if you use it for eight hours a day, that would be three days of use. So it, as long as it sits on the charging pad within that time, just put a, a charging mat wherever you want and uh, just drop the AirPods on there. So essentially, if you have a wireless charger, it's practically infinite battery life if you take it out um, and put it back in the case within 4.5 hours. And this is an interesting thing to me because I've seen a lot more products along this line, like the Apple Pencil, where if it, you put it back where it's supposed to go on the side of the iPad, it'll off, it'll automatically start charging super fast, um, and it's like really fast, like you can almost watch the uh, battery percent go up. Same thing with the AirPods, um, and this is really cool because we're seeing like the importance of battery life kind of go away um, at past a certain point. Maybe um, uh, we have a few more generations where that would matter, but as long as you put these type of products back where they go, you don't have to worry about the battery life. It's the same with the Apple Watch, the iPhone, and stuff. As long as you uh, have a wireless charger wherever you would set your phone down or whatever at the end of the day, um, it'll always be charged um, past a certain level of battery life. So uh, that's really exciting. I think maybe if these had like six or eight hours of battery life, we wouldn't have to even worry about it at all. Um, because there have been a couple times where I did run out of power and had to put them in the case and wait for a second. Um, but yeah, uh, pretty much uh, you don't even have to worry about the battery life if you have a wireless charger. Now the sound quality. I saved this for last because I don't, I am not an audiophile or anything. I don't, um, have a lot of headphones to benchmark this off of. I've tried Beats, I've tried Audio-Technica, I've tried the earpods that come with normal iPhones, but that's about it. So I don't have a super insightful um, uh, opinion or critique of these. I think they sound fine. They sound different than the AirPods or the earpods that come with iPhones and stuff. Um, 
I, w I don't know if I would choose these over the other ones, uh, but yeah, they sound slightly different. Maybe it's better. I don't know. Um, they're far better than Beats, I can tell you that. Um, <laughs> I tried Beats, and the Siri sounded like... I don't even know how it was that bad. That's another thing on these. Siri is really good. Um, but it sounded like a Fisher-Price toy on any other um, Bluetooth headphones I've had. I've, I've tried a couple pair. Um, um, and they all didn't sound as good as these. These are probably the best Bluetooth headphones I've heard. Not as good as the Audio-Technica ATH M50X, which are another super popular over-the-ear headphone. Um, but yeah, I mean, they sound fine. If you're an audiophile, maybe these wouldn't be the best choice. Maybe as like a, a side pair of headphones or something, just for convenience or something. But I think most people are going to be perfectly fine with these. Anyway, speaking of Siri, this is my favorite part of these, actually. Um, well, maybe the noise cancelling, but... One of my favorite parts of these is Siri, because she's actually way better than I thought she would be on here. And I use Siri a ton, like, all day long. I've always liked Siri. Um, so, when I found out how good Siri was on here, like, the, the voice recognition is far better, which I thought it would be, because it's right next to your mouth and stuff like that. You can hear it really well from there. Um, so Siri is super responsive on here. She hears you almost every time, like super good. I'd say like 95% of the time. Of course, it has the hands-free Siri commands and stuff like that. And um, uh, one of the cool things that you can do with the second generation AirPods or later Apple devices is Siri can read out iMessages you get and stuff like that through your ears so you don't even have to look at the phone or anything like that, um, which is super cool. Uh, another thing, that Siri can do on here that she can't on normal headphones is when you summon her, the, um, the interface comes up as usual, but it doesn't turn off whatever you're playing. It just kind of turns it down, and uh, I think you can turn the setting off or something if you want it to actually stop what you're doing, but I found this super seamless. It's really cool to use it because it doesn't really interrupt what you're doing or anything. And yeah, Siri is just super, uh, super good on here. Um, if you like Siri, as much as I do, and I love Siri a ton, uh, you, you definitely need to get these if you can afford them, because they're totally worth it, and, um, in conclusion, these are super great headphones, they're not the best sounding from a technical level or something, you could probably pay $150 and get better sounding over the ear headphones and stuff, um, I have some, but I still prefer these over any of those, just because they work so well. The, the Siri is actually a big deal. Of course, they're wireless. The noise cancellation is awesome. The transparency mode is super useful. You never have to take them out of your ears, except for charging, I guess. Um, it, it's super great. Uh, of course, they're waterproof, which you don't get on a lot of other headphones. Um, I've never had to use that, but it's nice to know they are a little bit waterproof. It's IPX4, but you know, it, it's good for rain and stuff like that. You wouldn't want to swim with it or anything, but um, it's a nice little insurance uh, on your headphones if, if you want to think of it like that. So yeah, if you have the money, I would say definitely get these over any other headphones unless you're like really, really um, know what you're, uh, you're listening to and are an audiophile or something like that, and you absolutely need the best quality, um, maybe get these as like a, a second pair of headphones or something if you're super rich. Um, but I, I'd say for any normal person, the convenience um, is very much worth it for these. Uh, I wouldn't recommend getting any other headphone. If you can save up for a little bit longer just to get these, I would highly recommend it, or heck, even the normal AirPods would be better than most, um, most other uh, headphones and stuff out there, in my opinion, especially if you're in the Apple ecosystem. They work great with Siri. They work great with Apple Music. Um, the deeper into the Apple ecosystem you are, the better. Um, and these have probably been the most, dare I say, life-changing product I've bought in quite a while, almost as much as my iPad Pro. Um, so, $250, I mean, that sounds like a lot of money, but um, maybe 
maybe it is, I don't know. I'd say it's worth it for these headphones though, because the amount of, um, like the amount of use and usefulness that these have is far above their price point in my opinion. I would take these over a new phone or a new iPad or whatever. Um, these are insanely useful. Long story short, they're really good. Uh, thank you for watching. If you want to buy these, I have an Amazon affiliate link in the description. If you buy them from there, I'll get a commission off of it, even though it costs the exact same for you, and I would really appreciate that. Uh, with that said, thank you so much for watching. Click one of these videos or playlists on the screen if you want to watch another video from my channel, and thank you for watching.